Going for a take, quite on set. Hi. Stand by. Action! We're here in the woods today filming a project called Speak of the Devil, and it's LightSail's first original project. To make this project, we really had to rely on a lot of help from people. We submitted to the Google Jump Start program, and that was really important because without access to the camera and access to the stitching, which is a very cost-intensive thing, I don't think a project like this would be made. And then, once we figured out our space requirements, we had to reach out to LumaForge, and we had to say, hey, can you help us with our storage? Because it's pushing the limits. We're working at 4K, 6K, 8K resolutions. We need the absolute fastest storage and the most amount of it that I've ever come across in my years in the film industry. We're shooting this project on the Google Jump system, which their first generation camera is called the GoPro Odyssey. And it consists of 16 GoPros, all Hero 4s, shooting in Protune into this array that delivers 3D VR. Here on Speak of the Devil, we're shooting about a terabyte and a half a day, and that is compressed GoPro. We've got 16 cards, we feed those 16 cards into the computer, and we load them into a Jellyfish mobile station. One of the big challenges of shooting a VR film it's more like immersive theater. You're finding where's the best place to put the camera. You're blocking the actors as if the camera is a person present in the scene and trying to create a sense of being in the place. The advantage is, is you only, you, once you got it, you got it, but getting it all in one take is extremely difficult. That feels better to me. And then also, we shot in a forest. There's not a lot of places to hide. So each scene also had to have a clean plate so that we could hide the crew. So typically when we were in the woods shooting, all of us would line up in a row and watch as the scene goes. And then after we were done and we were happy with the scene, we would like move positions and shoot what's known as a clean plate. We're gonna hide over that way for this shot. Um, so let's make our way over there and then let's shoot a clean plate. So we could paste them together and paint us out. Google stitched it all for us using their Jump Cloud system. What they're able to do is take all 16 cameras using a computer vision optical flow algorithm, derive a left eye and a right eye to create that 3D effect. And what we got back were these, you know, 6K stereoscopic files at 60 frames a second. So we're working with a mixture of Mac and PC workstations. These machines are doing the brunt of our heavy lifting. So early on, we realized very quickly that the H.264 files that we got from the Google Jump Cloud, they were choking the computers. There was just too much data to decompress those H.264 files. And so right away, we knew that we needed to do a lot of transcoding that we hadn't initially thought about. And luckily, we we're all working on essential storage. So we could load up all of our computers at the end of the day, and we did a whole batch transcode. We said, everything is going to be DNX HR. We're working at 6K by 6K, that's 6K each eye, at 60 frames a second. So it's stressing our computers to the max. So the first thing that we do is we create proxy files. And then our editor syncs up not only our array of cameras, but also our top and our bottom. Because the Google Jump system doesn't record top and bottom. We want to create the full 360 sphere. So we synchronize all those. And then we started editing. And we edited using nested sequences because if you're bringing in like seven layers of video and 14 tracks audio, your premiere timeline is just gonna be like messy and it's gonna be hard to figure it out. And we cut our scenes together. And then each of the cutscenes also have to have a endless repeating loop so that people after they watch the cutscene can hang out in the environment as long as they want. Hey. <laughs> What we did initially is instead of doing everything in a master sequence, we broke up all the scenes into their own premiere projects. And then we're able to, you know, using dynamic link, load them in for batch renders into media encoder. So what was great about it is we could have three people working all at once on the different parts of it, all referencing the media on the jellyfish. And this way we could, you know, get everything done in a single day for something that would have taken us probably three days. What is happening to me? VR, every shot is considered a visual effects shot. So once we're happy with the creative and ready to put on the finishing touches, 
We output the echo rectangular along with the top and bottom plates to composite and create that full 360 sphere effect. Helping us on this project was Jeremy Vanneman from Treehouse Studios based in Texas. To avoid slinging back hundreds of gigabytes of data over the internet, we would send him still frames or very low resolution proxy files to work on. And then he would deliver a nuke script back to us ready to reconnect to the source media and render. Initially, we were working at DPX, but once we realized just how many frames of footage we had, we switched over to OpenEXR, which offered a much more manageable file size. So we decided to jump headfirst into a new tool called Scratch VR. Scratch has been around a long time and they were the first to jump on offering native VR support, which not only gives us the ability to do power windows across the scene because it is 360 wear, but it also gives us the ability to grade inside a headset and see what our changes are going to look like for people actually watching the experience. Just like in Resolve, Scratch also requires us to work in stereo. So we use our separated right and our left eyes, we combine them together, and then we decided to use Boris's sharpening tool to bring out that little extra detail, and then we begin our grade on the master stereo sequence. I thought something was gonna... I don't know. Like all horror films, audio is incredibly important, and it's no different with Speak of the Devil. We worked with our longtime collaborator, Eric Wegener, to create a 3D spatial audio mix for each one of our 56 locations in Speak of the Devil. We use the Facebook spatial workstation and we take each track and we design a 360 degree soundscape. And this is great because we can help direct attention, we can kind of create a mood. So every scene has its own unique sound bed. And then we've also designed a general ambient sound to kind of keep you on edge the whole time. We take our stems out of the Facebook spatial workstation and we actually converted them to something called quad binaural, which is pre-rendered spatial audio. This is dramatically better on the CPU, enabling us to push a little bit higher performance in the video engine. Eric's using Pro Tools to do all of his mixing using the Facebook spatial audio workstation tools. These tools are great. They allow you to take the spatial audio that we record on set and combine it with lavalier audio and then use the panning tool in order to pan them around in 360 space. When you use the encoder, that creates a file that creates that 3D spatial sound effect that gives you such a realistic immersion in VR. This is a unique project because it's a hybrid of live action stereoscopic footage that's living in the Unity shell. We we're building this using Unity along with AV Pro's video engine in order to adaptive stream over eight gigabytes of finished H.264 videos to a mobile phone. And we're scripting it with hotspots to create the kind of interactivity so that you can look over here in the forest or look over here and an arrow kind of appears subtly on the ground. And when you click the daydream button, you'll move forwards. Working with our partners, we immersive for the streaming and development with the Oberon group We've helped create an interactive live action video toolkit for creating these kind of stories. Together, we've built a logic engine, a navigation manager, and several other useful tools that lay the foundation for future interactive projects to come. It's not a movie, and it's not a game. It's like there's something in between. And we're really recreating a whole world for the audience to explore and get involved with. We want as many people as possible to see this project. You're going to be able to play it on your Google Daydream. You're going to be able to play it on your Samsung Mobile Gear VR, Oculus, and Vive. And we're really excited because we think it's going to change the game of what is possible with narrative VR storytelling.